Victor Hugo once said that there is nothing in the world more powerful than an idea whose time has come. I had a hunch that we could do something that really foregrounded sound and an experience of sound as a way to be distinct and also memorable to people. So I kind of had this team out there looking for a speech that had been given in North Carolina that was related to the civil rights movement and that could potentially have a big impact on people today. And lo and behold, the speech that they came up with, which was the speech that Dr. King gave at the White Rock Baptist Church in February of 1960, just um, about a week and a half, two weeks after the start of the Greensboro sit-in, was that speech. The first phase was to do a reenactment of King's fill up the jail speech. The speech was never recorded. We only have a textual version of the speech that is available uh, for the public. But also there were not a lot of photographs taken and not a, any, any digital uh, recordings or audio recordings, if you will, and the church was torn down. So the very first phase was how to sort of reenact that at the current White Rock Baptist Church, even though that's not the original church. Is that when we found, by the help of God, a correct course, a morally sound objective, you do not equivocate. You do not retreat. You struggle to win a victory. And he was able to capture Dr. King's uh, cadence, his intonation, his pitch. Uh, if you were behind a curtain, you would not have known that, that was not Dr. King. So I, I was really impressed. Creating the model is, is really a challenge now because the, the existing church is no longer there so we can't go out and just measure it and take photographs. So we're relying on historical documents, photographs, uh, a few plans. We, we don't have a full set of architectural plans so that's you know, created a challenge for us. But we do have plans from the event where they installed an organ in the church so we have a few really critical dimensions where we can start to pull from and, and build our digital model from those. But the photographs have been really helpful because that helps us to understand you know, the window patterns, the textures on the wall, uh, how many seats were in the, in the auditorium and things like that. I helped capture uh, a live motion data from a performance actor and I mapped that data onto the um, virtual character of MLK and then place that character in a virtual reality space. Also, you watch a lot of videos of MLKs, you know, giving different speeches from the I, I Have a Dream and different recordings, video recordings that they have of him, and try to match his performance and what he did at different moments of the, of the speech. I think there's something about being in an immersive space because we are sensual creatures. These are inputs that, in an essence, we're manipulating to give you a sense of presence. So audio is a huge feature in this project. So even with the use of 360 degree photo, by shifting those different perspectives, changing the audio, and still keeping some of the spatial tracking. So if you move your head to the left, you still get a sense of where the source of the sound is coming from. And while I am not at all interested in this project of an exact replica of that night. We can't make that. I want us to understand this is not that. We're not trying to make an exact copy. What we're trying to do is produce something that gives us a sense of what that was like and to help us understand what it was that transformed people that night and what can transform people today. And uh, it's good to better use it for like research purposes and you know, academic and pedagogy, but we wanted to get the community engaged, for them, for them to be able to relive and re-experience history. Again, what's in the heart, the love, um, the spirituality of it all just ties in so nicely and it made me feel as though I was actually a part of it in 1960. I engaged with the church, the congregation. I sang with the choir and I left the sanctuary on May 17th in tears. The emotions were just so real, but yet and still we're in a virtual environment.
So of course, a, a whole backdrop of the, of the project is to bring to the fore the role of North Carolina history in relation to the broader global history of the civil rights movement. Uh, so a lot of my work has been how to actually make this the lives of everyday people, even though the project is about King. The project is also about the everyday lived realities of Americans, of American citizens, of black Americans. If you un want to understand the importance of everyday people, then you have to make sure that you include more of the historical record of everyday action and activism. And I think that's really important to contextualize the space in which King comes to White Rock. He's coming to a community that has already been pre-prepared. It was just an awesome day. The church was packed. Things that are going around, oh, Dr. King is coming. So we were very, very excited and everybody was getting ready to come to hear Dr. King speak. You've taken the undying and passionate yearning for freedom, filtered it into your own soul, and fashioned it into a creative protest that is destined to be one of the glowing epics of our time. I think what has been firm from our colleagues and our, uh, our participants and our other from the community about the VMK project is that it's expansive and it's layered. What I've done, what I do, and what I would like to continue doing is firmly set square with them when we're, when we're talking about social justice, we're talking about how to actually live with one another in love, when we're talking about race, when we're talking about thinking about the contemporary and historical ramifications of the civil rights movement. Going for it with the Virtual Martin Luther King Project is that we're doing two things, that we're talking about process so that we give people stepping stones and uh, kind of procedures of how to, to deal with the black community and then that more historicizing so we understand King in a broader moment than just White Rock. But then we want to also make this generational, and this is where the students come in. We want the students to carry right that experience and be um, enhanced, right? Not just educated, but transformed and enhanced personally and intellectually by being introduced to this knowledge. I want people to have an experience of what it means, first of all, to hear a speech in public with others and particularly to hear one that addressed concepts and ideas and problems of the time and that also addresses problems and concepts and ideas of today. The message is, 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 is powerful and I think the experience is moving and educational. Uh, and I see young people uh, uh, grasping it and absorbing it and appreciating it. But I would love to see it in the community in fact, I'd like to see it all over the world because people need to be aware of what it was like in, the, in those days. It's an exciting thing when you have a good hunch to start with, a good team of people to work with, then it makes even a most complex project like this one. It almost starts to have a life of its own and it starts to bring in more and more people and interest to it and then it kind of grows and grows. So it's a very organic thing, I guess I would say. And I still haven't found a good word to talk about how wonderful the project is and all its complexity and all that it tries to do. This to me is a true effort at utilizing digital humanities in a way that is putting history at work or to work, putting humanities to work. And pour your out blessing, it's your season to be And remember that both history and destiny is on your side. All the stars in their course are supporting you. Go out with the attitude that God is with us and we have a cosmic companionship. And one day, historians in this era might be able to say, there lived a great people, a black people, who injected a new meaning into civilization. Show us either. It's just